My wife left two years ago, now she's back, and wants things back to the way they were. Two years ago, my life took a turn that I could never have anticipated. It was a crisp autumn evening when my wife made the decision that would change everything. I'm just going out for a pack of smokes, she said, with a half-hearted smile, a line she had used before during our more turbulent times. I thought nothing of it at the moment. We had weathered storms together before. I assumed she just needed a breather, a moment away from the daily grind of parenthood and responsibilities. Little did I know she wouldn't return. For the past few months, she had been battling demons that were becoming increasingly evident. Depression had wrapped its tendrils around her, suffocating the vibrant person I once knew. I tried everything to help her find relief, from encouraging her to seek professional help to picking up the slack around the house. I even took on extra shifts at work to ensure she could have the space she craved. She often expressed how overwhelmed she felt, as if motherhood was a burden rather than a joy. I tried my best to reassure her to remind her of the love we shared, but it seemed my words were lost in the fog that clouded her mind. When she didn't return that evening, a knot formed in my stomach. I took our daughter to school the next day, hoping she would walk through the door with an apology and a plan. But as the hours turned into days, my worry morphed into despair. I called her mother, friends, and even hospitals, searching for any trace of her after three agonizing days, she finally called her mother, sounding eerily calm. I'm fine. Please don't look for me. I just need space, she said, her voice void of any emotion. The disconnect between the woman I loved and the stranger on the line shattered me. In her absence, I had to step up in ways I had never imagined. Raising a toddler alone was no easy feat. I became adept at juggling work and parenting, crafting bedtime stories out of thin air and navigating the tricky waters of toddler tantrums. Each night, I would hold my daughter close as she asked about her mother. When will mommy be back? She would ask with wide, innocent eyes, and I would struggle to find the right words to reassure her. She's on a trip, I would say, even though I knew it was a lie. Despite the heartbreak, I found strength in my daughter we formed an unbreakable bond, one built on late night snacks, movie marathons, and shared laughter. I cherished those moments, but the hole my wife had left remained a constant ache in my heart. I missed her presence, even if it had become a source of pain. A year passed, and as I began to heal, life took an unexpected turn. I met someone new, Jill. She entered my life like a gentle breeze bringing warmth and understanding. Jill had her own baggage, but she never pushed me to move too fast. We connected over coffee and long walks, and I found solace in her laughter. Our relationship was delicate, almost fragile, as I was still piecing together my life after my wife's departure. Jill was there for me, and she quickly established a bond with my daughter, becoming an aunt figure in her life. I appreciated the stability Jill brought into our home, but I never let my guard down completely. The scars from my wife's abandonment were still fresh, and I feared what would happen if I opened my heart too wide. Then came the fateful day when my world shattered yet again. My wife returned. It was a Saturday afternoon when I heard the knock at the door. I opened it to find her standing there, looking like a stranger. She was tanned and fit, with a confident smile that I hadn't seen in years. Hey guys, what did I miss? She said, as if she had just returned from a casual trip to the grocery store. My heart raced as I stood frozen in disbelief. Where have you been? I finally managed to say, my voice trembling with a mixture of shock and anger. I felt my daughter tugging on my sleeve, sensing the tension in the air. My wife stepped inside, seemingly unaware of the emotional whirlwind she had just unleashed. She launched into a casual recounting of her travels, as if I hadn't spent the last two years raising our daughter alone. I could feel my heart hardening as the walls I had built around myself began to rise. 
That evening, after my daughter went to bed, I confronted her. You just vanished without a word. You left us. Do you even know how hard it's been? My voice cracked, the pain I had kept hidden for so long pouring out like a flood. I know, and I'm so sorry, she said, her eyes brimming with unshed tears. I had to find myself. I was lost, and I thought you and our daughter would be better off without me. Better off? I echoed incredulously. You think disappearing for two years is what's best for us? The anger bubbled inside me, but I fought to contain it. I had to stay focused on the fact that she was back, but I didn't know if I wanted her back. I've changed, she insisted. I'm different now. I'm happy. I've traveled, met new people, and learned so much. I want to be a part of your lives again. As she spoke, I felt a flicker of hope. Perhaps this was the opportunity we needed to mend the broken pieces of our family. But just as quickly, doubt crept in. Could I trust her not to leave again? Would our daughter be safe from the heartbreak of losing her mother once more? I took a step back, my mind racing. What about Jill? I asked, realizing I had to confront the reality of the situation. She's been here for us, and she's built a bond with our daughter. My wife looked momentarily taken aback. Who is Jill? I felt a pang of guilt for what I had built in her absence. Someone who has helped me cope. Someone who cares for our daughter. I replied, my voice steady. She's been here when you weren't. I see, my wife said quietly. I can understand if you've moved on, but I need you to know I want to be a family again. The tension hung in the air as we both struggled with our emotions. I thought of the time we spent apart, the lessons I had learned, and the bond I had formed with Jill. But I also thought of our daughter, who had been waiting for her mother's return. This isn't just about us anymore, I reminded her. It's about her. That night, I couldn't sleep. I tossed and turned, my thoughts racing as I weighed my feelings for my wife against the newfound stability Jill brought into my life. My heart felt heavy with the uncertainty of what the future held. Over the next few days, my wife made an effort to re-establish her role in our daughter's life. She was affectionate and caring, but I couldn't shake the feeling of betrayal. I watched her interact with our daughter, and while it filled me with joy, I also felt a pang of resentment. Why should I forgive her so easily? Jill sensed the tension and gave me space. We didn't see each other for a while, and I felt a void without her presence. I longed for the comfort she provided, but I also felt the weight of my obligations to my family. I needed to make a decision. After a few weeks of navigating the delicate balance between my wife's return and Jill's absence, I decided to meet with Jill. I invited her to a quiet cafe, hoping to be honest about everything. As I sipped my coffee, my heart raced. Would she understand? When she arrived, I could see the concern in her eyes. What's going on? She asked, sitting down across from me. I took a deep breath, ready to lay my heart bare. My wife is back, and she wants to be a family again, I said, watching her expression shift from concern to hurt. But I'm torn. I don't want to hurt you, and I don't want to throw away what we've built. Jill reached for my hand, her touch warm and reassuring. You have to do what's best for you and your daughter. I won't hold you back from that, she said softly. But you need to be honest with yourself about how you feel. You deserve happiness too. In that moment, I realized how much Jill had come to mean to me. She had been my anchor when my world felt adrift. But I also recognized the history I shared with my wife, the love that once was, and the possibility of rekindling it for our daughter's sake. The following days were filled with deep reflection. I had conversations with my wife about her intentions and the changes she had made. She expressed a desire to be present in our daughter's life, to work through the past and to rebuild our family. It was a slow process, filled with moments of vulnerability and heartache, but I found myself softened by her determination. But in the back of my mind, I couldn't ignore the bond I had formed with Jill. Our conversations were filled with laughter, support, and an understanding that had blossomed in the wake of chaos. I missed her presence in my life and wondered if I could truly let her go. As time passed, I found myself at a crossroads. I had to make a choice. I invited both my wife and Jill to meet me at a park, 
where we could talk openly. I knew it was a risky move, but I needed clarity. When we all gathered, I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. Thank you for coming, I began, my voice steady but filled with emotion. I've been doing a lot of thinking, and I want us to have an honest conversation about where we stand. My wife looked anxious, her hands fidgeting in her lap, while Jill appeared composed but watchful. I want to work on our family, my wife said first. I know I hurt you, and I'm sorry. I want to rebuild trust, and I'll do whatever it takes. Jill's eyes met mine, filled with understanding. I appreciate that, she said, her voice calm. But I also don't want to be a second choice. If he chooses to be with you, I want him to be happy. The tension thickened as we all processed the gravity of the moment. I took a deep breath and spoke from my heart. I value the time we've spent together, Jill. You've been a light in a dark time, but I can't ignore the history I have with my wife. I want to give her a chance to prove herself for our daughter's sake. Jill nodded slowly, and I could see the hurt in her eyes. I understand, she said, her voice steady, but I won't wait indefinitely. I need to take care of myself too. As we all sat in silence, I realized the path ahead wouldn't be easy. I had decisions to make, and the consequences would ripple through our lives. In that moment, I understood that love could be complicated and messy, but it was also worth the struggle. In the weeks that followed, I focused on rebuilding my relationship with my wife while honoring the bond I had created with Jill. It was a delicate balancing act, but I was determined to navigate it with honesty and respect for everyone involved. The journey wasn't straightforward, but it was filled with growth, understanding, and a renewed commitment to what truly mattered, family, love, and the courage to face the unknown. I snooped on my wife's phone and found out how unhappy she is in our relationship. We met five years ago under circumstances that felt serendipitous, a mutual friends party where I was immediately drawn to her contagious laughter and radiant smile. Our connection was instant, and after two years of being inseparable, we tied the knot. I thought I had found my perfect partner. She never seemed to tire of my quirks that came with my ADHD and autism. She saw me for who I truly was, and for that, I felt incredibly lucky. In the early days of our relationship, we experienced a whirlwind of romance. Late night conversations, spontaneous road trips, and endless laughter filled our days. I fell in love with her kindness, intelligence, and ability to make the mundane feel magical. I had never felt more seen or cherished than when I was with her. However, the beautiful tapestry of our life together began to fray after our wedding. Our honeymoon phase quickly transformed into a more complicated reality. While I was still deeply in love, I noticed a subtle shift in her demeanor. As life stresses piled up, my two teenagers from my previous marriage adjusting to our new life her job demands, and the expectations of marriage, the cracks began to show. It all came to a head just a few days ago after an ostensibly perfect Valentine's dinner. The night had started beautifully with candlelit ambience and laughter. Yet, somewhere along the line, we found ourselves tangled in an argument that spiraled out of control. She made hurtful comments about my weight gain, and I couldn't help but feel as though she had taken a knife to my insecurities. The aftermath of our fight left me in a fog of confusion and hurt. She offered a lukewarm apology the next morning, one that felt devoid of sincerity. I didn't respond. I was too preoccupied with my thoughts, avoiding her gaze and withdrawing into myself. Our once vibrant home felt cold and distant. I didn't want to talk, to confront the issues that had just erupted, and instead I threw myself into my work, hoping to drown out the emotional turmoil. Then came the day when she went out with her friends to a party. She left early in the morning, and I could tell she hadn't even considered inviting me. The silence of the house was deafening as I watched her leave, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being shut out. I had been hoping she might reach out during the day, but when night fell and she still hadn't returned, a storm of anxiety began to brew inside me. When she finally came home around 2 a.m., she was clearly drunk and fell asleep on the couch, leaving me feeling like a ghost in my own home. As I sat there, emotions bubbling under the surface, 
I couldn't help but feel like I was losing her. That night, driven by a mix of worry and a desperate need for answers, I found myself picking up her phone. I had always struggled with trust, especially after previous relationships that had left me feeling shattered. I knew snooping was wrong, but I felt compelled to understand what was going on in her life, what I might be missing. What I found sent my heart racing. I opened the Photos app first, hoping to find something innocuous, pictures from the party, maybe a fun group shot with friends. Instead, I found nothing unusual. Her day appeared normal. But when I opened her text messages, I stumbled upon a conversation with her best friend. They had been discussing our argument and her feelings about our marriage. My heart sank as I read her admission of how she felt she had said really mean things to me. What struck me even harder was her friend's response, urging her to be honest with herself. My wife then replied, I really don't like who I am in this relationship. Those words echoed in my mind like a haunting refrain. Her browser history revealed an open tab on an article titled, How to Tell if You're Unhappy in a Relationship. The realization hit me like a punch to the gut. How could she have gotten to this point without talking to me? Was I really that blind to the issues we faced? Despite my hurt, I couldn't help but wonder if I had been part of the problem. My struggles with ADHD often meant I was scatterbrained, overwhelmed by the demands of life. Had I unintentionally made her feel trapped? I treated her like a queen, showering her with affection and attention. But clearly, it wasn't enough. After a sleepless night filled with turmoil and self-reflection, I confronted her the next morning. She was groggy and disoriented, the sunlight pouring through the windows and exposing the shadows of our problems. We need to talk, I said, my voice steady but filled with pain. Her eyes widened and she nodded, sensing the gravity of the moment. I recounted what I had discovered, each revelation feeling like a weight that pulled us further apart. I asked her why she hadn't come to me with her feelings, why she had chosen to confide in her friend instead. I was scared, she admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. I didn't want to hurt you more. I thought if I just ignored it, it would go away. But it hasn't, I pressed, frustration boiling over. You've been feeling this way for a while, and you didn't think I had the right to know? She looked down, her expression one of shame and regret. I didn't know how to say it. I thought I could figure it out on my own. The conversation spiraled into a mix of anger and vulnerability. I told her that it felt like we had both been living parallel lives, avoiding the issues that were tearing us apart. I shared my fears about her drinking, about the disconnect I felt growing between us, and the hurt I carried from her remarks. She broke down, tears streaming down her face as she struggled to articulate her feelings. I hate that I hurt you. I don't want to be this person anymore. I feel lost, she sobbed. I wanted to reach out and comfort her, to wipe away her tears, but I hesitated. How could I comfort someone who had made me feel so small? After a long and emotional conversation, we finally reached a point of honesty. Maybe we need to consider some time apart, I suggested cautiously, to really think about what we want. Her eyes widened at my suggestion. You think that's what we need? It might help us both figure out if we can truly make this work, I replied, trying to keep my emotions in check. Over the next few days, we both took time to reflect on our relationship. I visited a therapist to work through my feelings and to better understand the issues at play. I thought about our shared history, the love, the laughter, the dreams we had built together. I didn't want to throw all of that away without trying to salvage it. As we navigated this tumultuous time, I kept reminding myself of the love we had shared. It was still there, buried beneath the layers of hurt and misunderstanding. I also recognized that she needed to address her own issues to figure out who she wanted to be in this relationship. After a week apart, we decided to meet and have an honest conversation. Sitting across from each other in a cozy cafe, the atmosphere was charged with unspoken words and lingering emotions. I've been thinking a lot, I began, taking a deep breath, about what we both want. I have too, she admitted, her gaze steady. I don't want to lose you, but I also don't want to feel like I'm suffocating. We talked about the future and the steps we needed to take to rebuild our relationship. We agreed to seek couples counseling again and to be more open about our feelings. 
I suggested that we take things slow, allowing ourselves the time to heal individually while supporting each other. We might not have all the answers yet, but as we took those first steps forward, I realized that the journey was worth every struggle. After all, love isn't just a feeling, it's a choice we make every day, a commitment to grow and evolve together. And as we moved forward, hand in hand, I knew we were ready to embrace whatever the future held.